The ladies' ministry will host a wellness workshop on today. Dr. Timothy Quinn will be conducting the workshop. It'll be at 5 p.m. via Zoom. All are invited. That's men and women. And Doc told me there'll be a question and answer session at the end. So please tune in at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Graduates, get your information in to Jennifer Hughes as soon as possible. I'm going to go ahead and share this invitation with you. You're invited to Kelsey Ransom's graduation ceremony. Uh, she is magnum cum laude, Master of Science in Communicative Disorders. That's going to be on April the 28th. Give her a good strong love deposit. Magnum cum laude. I don't even know what that means. Been a whole lot of years for me. Yeah, yeah, that it must mean something. She's way on up the ladder. It's all good. April, I've been out of school a long time. April the 28th, 2023 at 9 a.m., Jackson State University, Lee E. Williams Athletic and Assembly Center. Congratulations. The rest of you graduates, turn your information in so we can acknowledge you as well. Sick and shut in. I want to continue to pray for Angie Rivers. Uh, she is improving, her husband informed me. Augusta Turner's surgery went well this past Friday, so we want to give God a hand clap of praise for that. She's home recovering, along with her husband, Cleveland. Let's keep Charles Dixon in our prayers as well. Let's continue to pray for all of our sick and shut in. I want to continue to pray for Dwayne Collier and his family. Uh, she was a sister. Uh, Collier was funeralized on yesterday. Let's continue to keep his family in our prayers. All right. Stand to your feet, if you will. Let's look to your left, look to your right. But just simply say, I'm plumb glad to see you in the house on this morning. Yeah. All right. Sound like we want to praise God this morning. We turn the services back over to our great song leaders. God bless you. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. I've been running ever since I made a start. Oh, you know that my days are King Jesus going to make my bird of the because of his love is above the Burying in the mind, down in, well, shout hallelujah, glory, hallelujah, well, don't you know I've been running ever since I made a song, well, you know that my days are, King Jesus gonna make my burdens, because of his love, is above us, my yeah. Shout hallelujah, yeah. Glory, hallelujah, yeah. Don't you know I've been running since I made a start? Good God Almighty, my days, my days are King Jesus gonna make my burden because of his love. Because of his love is a bubble. Because of his love is a bubble. Thank God your love bubbling over in my yeah. Shout a hallelujah, yeah. So the glory, hallelujah, yeah. Said I've been running ever since. Made a start. My days, King Jesus gonna make all of our burdens because of His love, yeah, yeah. Because of His love, His love, we thanking You for Your love, yeah. Because of His love, woke up this morning because of His love, yeah. We started on our way, His love, yeah.
Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Let us go to our God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are thankful again that you allowed us to still be on this time side of life, here able to hear words that are designed to build us up as you allow us to travel, go through life way. We give you all the credit and every bit of the glory. We thank you for keeping us in your love and in your, in your care, keeping us through the unseen dangers of that we have gone through and made it possible for us to be here to say thank you and render praises to thy holy and divine blessed name. We ask and pray that you, that you forgive us for all sin, those that we omitted as well as committed. We thank you most of all for Jesus that made it possible that I can, we can come before thy presence and words can be brought that is suitable for thy divineness. Thank the Holy Spirit, Lord of our heart. We are Father, we thank you, Lord, ruler of this vast universe we live in. Now we ask and pray that you continue to keep us in your care here, that those that are on, on, in virtue, those that are here, one by one, name by name, that you help and keep us and strengthen us all according to our needs, that we'll be what is required of us as you allow us to travel through life way. We ask and pray for those that loved ones have made their transition that you comfort the family in ways that you can and only you can. We ask and pray that those that you continue to uh, stay with church stores that are open in your name, that we all will have that sense of urgency about doing your will, knowing that people are dying all around us in every way. We ask and pray that you keep all of those that are leaders in the paths of righteousness, each and every one of us, that we help do those that follow us, that the world may know there is a reality in serving you. Keep us in your care, and most of all, stay with uh, Pitt as he come and minister, as he come before us, bring in remembrance to things that he have studied, that he would be able to depart into the here in a way that you would have it to be done. We ask and pray for our nation, those in the leadership, and realize that righteous exalt a nation, but sin is reproach to any people, that you allow her to continue to stand, that we continue to have these freedoms to live and worship without fear or intimidation. Uh, any such thing, freedoms that we do take for granted. Keep us in your care. Keep us all in every way, and we will always give you all, it, all that is due. And keep us from evil as you allow us to travel through life way. Thank you, Father. This we pray in our dear beloved sweet son, Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. There is a name I love to hear, oh, I love to sing his words. It sounds like music in my deep, oh, the sweetest name on earth, and oh, oh, oh. How I, I really do, I really love the Lord, oh, I love the Lord, oh, 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 how I, I love him, I really do, because he first loved me, and oh, be a great song by which we could go right into the offering because it's because of the love of Jesus that we have this great privilege that we have to be a part of the family of God. But we want to uh, not only to uh, do what he did, but we want to remember what he did. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 
in verse 23 and following. The Bible reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take ye, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. He who died that we might live. Let us do this in remembrance of him and let us give thanks. Our God and our Father, we thank you for both the privilege and the opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper as we do it in remembrance of your pain, your agony, your death, your willingness to be our replacement. We understand that even in my best day, I could not have been good enough to do what you did. And even in your worst day, you were good enough to save me. So as I partake of this bread and this cup, I ask for your blessings on both as I do it in remembrance of you. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus singing. No, 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 not a one. None else could. All our soul diseases singing, no, 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 not one. Well, you know that Jesus, oh, he, he knows all about my trials and my struggles, and he will guide. Oh, till the day is done, I know that there's not nobody like, nobody like, oh, Jesus, sing it with me, no. No, 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 not a one. Listen, there's not an eye that he not sing it now. No, no, not a one. No, no. So but his love, his love, his love can cheer us. Sing it now, no, 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 not a one, no, 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 not a one. Well, you know that Jesus knows. Oh, he knows, he knows all. All about my struggle. Oh, and he will guide. He will guide. Oh, until the day, the day, day is done. I know that day. There just ain't nobody like. Nobody like. Sing it with me, no, 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 not a one, no, 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 not a one. As we move forward, I'm going to give you an opportunity 
and that is to give. Giving is just that, an opportunity. And I think it's very important that we be able to see giving as an opportunity. However, sometimes we need to be asked certain questions. In Malachi 3, in verse 8, the Bible says, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes, in offerings. But this was a suggestion he offered in verse 10. He says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I would not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there should not be room enough to receive it. The more we give, the more he gives to you. So keep on giving. Because it's really true that you can't be God's giving, no matter how you try. Let me just add a little juice and spices to your offering by asking God to bless it. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you give us to give. We know we can't beat your giving, but we also understand that you bless our seed sown. So we want to sow seed in your honor. Let you bless it that I might have enough to eat and that you might multiply the rest. We thank you for being the God that you are. We thank you in advance for blessing this offering. Bless each other givers. Bless even the mindset of others as they will convert that mindset to give if it's not there already. So much to be thankful, thankful for. So we'll just say thank you. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Let us all say amen. amen. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I've come, I've come to receive, to receive my blessing. Patiently waiting, waiting for the harvest in life. I've got the Hebrew, 11 and 1, the kind of faith. Oh, and it's mine, all oh, mine. Oh, Lord. Oh, and oh, Lord. Mm. I've come to receive. Patiently waiting. Waiting for the harvest in night. And I've got that Hebrew. <laughs> Eleven and one. Oh, the kind of faith. Mm, and it's mine. Oh, mine. Oh, Lord, yes. Well, I believe in him for great things. <laughs> he promised me a long time ago. I believe. That I'm gonna get it all because the Bible tells me so. Lord, now is the Father's real good pledge that the kingdom get in line. And oh, and it's mine. Oh, mine. Oh, Lord, yeah. oh, and oh. Come to receive. I've been patiently waiting. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. I've been waiting for a long time. Lord, now I've got that Hebrew. Eleven and one. Oh, the kind of faith. And it's mine. Oh, mine. Thank you, Lord. Well, now I'm going to get it. I'm going to get my going to get it. Lord, I'm going to get it. Lord, I've been so in. I've been so in. I believe it. Lord, now I receive it. 
And it's a mind, oh mind, everything, everything that I need, yeah, and it's a mind, oh mind, everything, everything that I need, my blessing, my blessings, my blessings on the way, my my blessings, my blessings on the way. My blessings, my blessings, my blessings on the way. And it's mine, oh my everything, everything that I need. And it's mine, oh. Good morning. Today's scripture reading is going to come from 1 Peter 4, verses 1 through 5. Again, that's 1 Peter 4, verses 1 through 5. And it reads, For as much then as Christ hath suffered for, for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from, ceased from sin. That is, he no longer should live the rest of his life the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to write the will of Gentiles when we walk in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, reveling, banqueting, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of right, speaking evil of you, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick in the dead. I have just read to you 1 Peter 4, verses 1 through 5. May the Lord bless the hearers and doers of his holy and divine word. Amen. Show, show me, show me the way. And the Lord, show, show.
time and all the time God is good. Has he been good to you? Has he been great to you? Didn't he wake us up this morning? Started us on our way? Somebody ought to get a Lord a hand clap of praise for that. Just before Bishop comes up and give us a mighty word. Well, you ought to walk in the, oh Lord, I walk in the, I know that Jesus is the, oh Lord, now Jesus is the, you ought to come away the, well, come on away the, I said mercy shining, well, got mercy shining, you ought to shine, shine all around, I'm Lord, my day. I am a night um, Well, I know that Jesus is um, Yeah, Jesus is um, Oh, Lord, Jesus is alive And whoa, you ought to walk in the Oh, Lord, I walk in the I know that Jesus is um, Oh, Lord, now Jesus is um, You ought to come to wear um, Well, come on to wear um, I said mercy shining Well, God's mercy shining You ought to shine Shine all around um, Lord, in my day Day and by night Well, let me tell you that Jesus yeah, Jesus is a, oh Lord, Jesus is the light of the world. Well, I came to Jesus as I was, I was so weary, was wounded and sad, took all my burdens and my sins and washed them away. And I can say today, Lord, I'm so glad, Lord. 
God, I want to thank you for saving my soul. You, they tell me salvation, more precious than gold. And that's so why I know that Jesus yeah, Jesus is a light. Oh Lord, Jesus is the light of the world. One day, one day, one day, God looked down on me. He said to my soul, I won't set you free. See, God knew that I had fallen down on my faith. He said, I've got a son that can plead in your case. Now get up on your feet, oh Lord, and dust off your clothes up. And go to the water, you can save your soul. And that's why I know that Jesus is alive. Yeah, Jesus is alive. Oh Lord Jesus, he is the light of the world. Well, now that I have been washed in his blood, I've got to thank God for all of his love. God sent his son down from Calvary. Well, he died for you and die for me and Lord I want to thank you for giving your life and I'll always be a member of Church of Christ and that's why I know that Jesus yeah Jesus yeah Jesus is alive and whoa you ought to walk on in the light, on in the light of well I know that Jesus Jesus, Jesus is the light of where you are to come. Um, where, where the dew drop. Well, I said, God, mercy is everlasting. Yeah, you are to shine, shine all around. Um, Lord, by day, day and by night. Yeah, I know that Jesus, yeah, yeah, yeah Jesus, yeah. Oh Lord, I walk in the light. I know that Jesus, He is the light. Of where we gotta come, come where the dew drop. Where God's mercy is everlasting. Yeah, Lord, you ought to shine, shine all around. Him. Lord, by day, day and by night. Let me tell you that Jesus, he is, a, yeah, Jesus is the light. Yeah, 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 you ought to walk in the light. Walk in the light. Oh, Jesus is the light. Oh, Jesus is the light. Come where the dew, come where the dew, mercy shining bright. The mercy shining bright, shining all around, shining all around. Day and by night, day and by night, Jesus is the light. Jesus is the light. Yeah, Jesus is the light. How many of y'all know light. Jesus is the light? Yeah, 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 you are the one. In the I'm walking light. in the light in the light. I know that Jesus, Jesus, is, the Jesus light. is the light. Jesus is where the light. you ought to come, uh, um, where come do, where the dew drops. Uh, yeah, where the dew said his mercy is shining bright. It's everlasting. Yes, you ought to shine on all around, all around, shine um, all around. Lord, and by day, day um, by day, day and by night. Day let me tell you that Jesus is a light. Oh, Jesus is a light. Oh, Lord, Jesus is the light of the world. Praise the Lord in the house. How many of y'all know Jesus is the light? He is the light of the world. And we ought to be thankful and grateful to the God of heaven who is not just good some of the time, but he is good all of the time, and all of the time God is good. And if God has been good to you, say amen. amen. If he's brought you from nowhere to somewhere, say amen again. Amen. Set your feet on solid ground, say amen again. Amen. 
If you love the Lord, say amen again. Love the Lord's church, say amen again. Love the Lord's church, turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I love you. It ain't nothing funny about my love. It ought not be anything funny about the love that we have one for the other. We ought to have agape love. That is a love that is in spite of and not because of. We ought to love folk in spite of what they say to us and what they say about us. We still ought to love them. Amen. Even in spite of what they do uh, to us. We ought to love them anyway. Praise the Lord. And it's not about feeling. It's about how you treat the one that you love. Hey, praise the Lord. Yeah, you can love your enemy. And that's what the Bible says. Love your enemy. You can love those that despitefully use you. Praise the Lord. And say all men of evil against you. You can love them as well. It means that if you, they're hungry, you give them some to eat. If they're, if they're uh, thirsty, you give them something to drink. Hey, praise the Lord. And now, as I've often said, you may be sleeping with the enemy, but uh, you still <laughs> love him or love her. <laughs> praise the Lord in the house. God is good. I, I said God is good. Amen. He's all the time good. And, you know, and when we come to the house of worship, you know, I'm changing my terminology and saying coming to church, we come to worship. I didn't get enough amens on that. We ought to testify to everybody. When we come here, we come to worship God. And nothing ought to keep us from coming to worship. If we had to come in on a wheelchair, come on to worship. If come in or come in on crutches, come come on to worship. Amen. Because you see, if your if your situation is going to get any better, it's going to be because of you worshiping God. All the stuff that Abraham, I mean not Abraham, Job went through, you know, lost this, lost that, lost that. But you find, uh, you know, Job worshipped God. And when he worshipped God, and we know the fast forward, God changed his situation. Change his circumstance. Praise the Lord. That's what y'all to do. You're going having some problems. Don't stay at home. Come on to worship. You, you having some situations in your life. This is the place you need to be. <laughs> Relational situation. You need to be here. To worship God. Not to perform. But to worship. Not to uh, for, uh, a uh, show. Uh, but to worship. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. We come here to worship. That's what we do. We come here to worship. And you let everybody know. If you're here, I'm going to worship. Going to church. I don't know where we got that terminology from. You're in the church. Come to church. We know the church is the building. Yeah, the church is not the building, brother. We're the church. So we're coming to worship. Is it all right? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> if you had, somebody had to drag, you ought to be drugging here. Say, so just drag me on in. Because <laughs> I'm coming to worship and giving praise and honor to my mighty God. We don't thank our brethren for leading us in such a spirited devotional service. Amen. And uh, uh, we appreciate you as well in joining in because no one can praise God for you. No one can praise God for me. Yeah, I have my own praise because when I come, I come to worship and just thanking him for all of what he has done. You know, we, we, yeah, we, were, we were talking in, uh, uh, Brother Lashua, and I won't put it all on him, but uh, uh, we were discussing how... Uh, the denominational folk can come to worship and they'll be, they'd be so excited about being in worship. Amen. And some of us come in and look like we, like the folks you said, been sucking on a sour lemon and, 
life done beat us down and, and even have a statement that I'm tore up from the floor. Well, how you get so tore up? You're a child of God. God and bless you. Amen. Amen. And then, you know, some folk, you know, even after worship, they go out looking ugly. <laughs> it didn't affect them at all. At least when you come in, if you're down, you ought to leave out up. Amen. You ought to believe all this singing and praising and the word being preached and you still... And some folk I don't even want to look at when I'm preaching. <laughs> I, I, I got those praises in my sight. You know, I can, you know, the ones that lift up holy hands and say, preach on, preacher. Say it again, preacher. Those, those folk I key in on. I, them with the ugly faces. I, I, I can. And, you know, I know some folk can't help it, but some of y'all that can all you got to do is put a smile on your face. That'll help you look. Well, anyway, that ain't, that ain't the lesson. We're going we're gonna to keep those and uh, the lost loved ones in our prayers. And, and those who are going through various uh, situations in life, yeah, uh, illnesses, and we want to keep you in our prayers as well. And... Uh, uh, let, let me say this. Well, this ain't my lesson, but we all are going to leave here. Get that in your, in your spirit. Psyche. Now, we pray that God heal you, and he does. That that, that mean you're going you're gonna to be here forever. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, he may heal you this time, and, and then next time he may heal you, but next time he might not. So the thing that we need to do, we need to be in Christ and, 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 and encourage folk to get in Christ because it's going to come to all of us. But if you're a child of God, it's indeed an ongoing celebration. How many of y'all brought your Bibles today? I had, um, amen, amen, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I want to welcome those on live screen. We appreciate your presence. Um, uh, and especially those who are non-members and those who uh, can't come, we, we appreciate you on live screen. We've been getting some good responses uh, from our live screen. We appreciate you and, and much of, uh, uh, not much, but you know, some, you know, of the monies that are given to the, uh, uh, you know, the situation there in, in uh, where's uh, Silver City and Rolling for, we were given by Gillify people that, you know, just want to help out. Non-members. And we do have non-members giving. We have non-members listening. Uh, yeah, that's what God has done. He's opened opportunity for us to get the gospel out. Amen. Folk are responding all over uh, to the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so what we want to do, I intend... I thought about uh, piggybacking from uh, last Sunday and dealing with power, and this is uh, New Self Power. I want to appreciate Brother Kermit and others who are teaching. Um, but I want to go back to this idea of time. Yeah, time. Because we, we think we got a lot of time. <laughs> we think we got a lot of time. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, start off with this. Uh, and run his home going, you know, uh, I, I see and I feel the urgency of understanding that we don't have as much time that we think we have. Praise the Lord. And I'm talking to young folk. I'm talking to young folk as well. As, you know, we know older folk, you, you get in the area of your 70s, 80s, and 90s, honey, you need to have your bags packed. <laughs> Ain't no need you. <laughs> Go on, pack your bags. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Amen. First Peter chapter four. Therefore, as as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walk in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable adulteries, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of wrath, speaking evil of you. Is that in your Bibles? Let us pray. Our Father and our God is once again that we come before your throne of grace. We come with thanksgiving in our hearts and praise on our lips. For you are worthy to be praised. We're thankful most of all for Jesus Christ who gave his life that we might have life. We're thankful for the church of Christ which he purchased with his own blood. We're thankful for the gospel of Christ, which indeed has the power to save the whole world. And we are thankful for the gift of the Holy Spirit, who lives inside of us, who teaches us, who guides us, shows us things to come. Also gives us the power to be victorious in life. And Father, we ask now that we allow the whole your word to have a free course in our hearts that we will receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save our souls. Use me, Father, as a vessel to proclaim the word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It is in Jesus' holy name that we ask it all. Let the church say, Amen, amen, amen. Y'all wondering why I'm back in the pulpit. I, last Sunday was Resurrection Sunday, so I was resurrected. <laughs> so I'm in the pulpit. Uh, we had um, a couple of, uh, well, comments from uh, some of our a denomination of friends, and uh, this sister, uh, they had mentioned this to her about the preacher being in the pulpit, you know. You know, traditionally, that's, that's the way it is. Somebody call it the pulpit where he stands and uh, preaches the word of God. And so uh, most denominational folk have a certain reference for the pulpit or for the desk that the preacher stands behind. And matter of fact, I may as well drop this while I'm over it. Uh, they have more reverence for the man that stands behind the pulpit than a lot of us who are members of the body of Christ. I ain't hearing too much amen. But God, the man that stands behind the desk of the pulpit is the messenger of God. And God put him there. Amen. I don't have no problem with this church. I, 
y'all, 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 y'all respect and y'all uh, 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 respect uh, me as the man of God, preacher of God, you know, word of God. So I don't have no, you know, I don't have no problem here, you know, for that concern. But in a lot of places, they want to put the preacher as a hired servant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's a hired servant, and and uh, we hired him so we can find. <laughs> and a sister called me from Detroit and asked me about uh, a situation uh, and uh, that's going on in the church there. And she asked a question. She said, uh, "Where is in the scripture? Because the elders told me that they have in the bylaws." Uh, that they can hire and fire the preacher. This new preacher coming in. So they want to put in the bylaws <laughs> that we don't like <laughs> what's going on with you. We, we can hire and fire you. And she said, well, now, where, where is that in the Bible, preacher? I've been looking for it and looking for it and looking for it. They say it's in the Bible. But I, I can't find it. I said, you won't find it. Because it's not there. And the closest thing come to that is Acts 20 and 28. Where Paul said, talking to the Ephesian elders, he told the elders, feed the church of God. Over which the Holy Spirit have made you overseers. Now, that's, that was a preacher telling the elders. Because he was leaving. <laughs> Some of y'all, y'all don't like that kind of, uh, but I just want to teach. I want this congregation to be understanding and knowledgeable, you know. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And I ain't on no ego trip. I just know my assignment. I just know my assignment. And what God has called me to do. I want to, um, speak on the subject, as I said, uh, start to kind of talk about power and will before the months end again. But I want to want us to key in on this idea, what he talks about in about time. And the subject is primarily uh, in verse uh, number uh, two. He says that he no longer talk about, you know, person understanding Christ, what he has done. The Christian that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh. Well, you know, comparing that with Christ. To the lust of men, but to the will of God. And so the subject I want to pin with this verse is what are you going to do with the rest of your time? What are you going to do with the rest of your time? Turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor, what are you going to do with the rest of your time? And it is the rest of your time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, what are you going to do uh, with the rest of your time? Peter, as well as Paul, wrote much about time. Paul, as you know, talked about redeeming the time. In Romans 13, 11, he talks about knowing the time, that it is high time. And so Peter also had a great deal to say about time. You see, we don't know how much time we got, however amount of time we have. What, what, what are you going to do with the rest of it? Peter, who had... In 1 Peter 1, 5, listen, 
He says, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Then he says in 1 Peter uh, 1, 11, searching what, uh, what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand, rather, the suffering of Christ and the glory of that should follow. First Peter 1, verse 17, and if you call on the Father who without respect a person judge it according to every man's work, he says, pass the time of your sojourning, and one, one particular version says, of your temporary residence here in fear, and that word fear means in true reverence, whether it's long or short. First Peter 1, verse 20, who verily, he says, was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last time for you. And then I want to jump over the text. In, in 1 Peter 5 and verse 6, he says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he might exhort you in what? Due time. And then in our text, in 1 Peter 4, 2 and 3, where he says that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men but to the what will of God verse 3 says for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walk in lasciviousness and excess of wine reveling banqueting and abominable idolatries Let me ask the question again. What are you doing, going to do with the rest of your time? I have an amount of time that is, whether it is years, months, or weeks, or even days. What are you going to do with it? Someone has said that we are either going to spend time, waste time, or invest time. What are you going to do with the rest of your time? Are you going to spend the rest of your time or your rest of your life sulking? You're going to spend the rest of your time sour and sad and mad and struggling all your life, striving with no joy, no peace, no amen. You're going to spend the rest of your time. Some folk, you know, don't have no joy. No peace. You're always struggling. Struggling and striving in relationships, in marriage. You're struggling and striving. When are you going to uh, settle down and enjoy your spouse? When are you going to settle down and, 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 and uh, uh, make a house a home? What are you going to do about your, your, your time? Are you going to emotionally, you going to, all your life, all the time you got left, you going to be an emotional wreck? Amen. What are you going to do? Unhappy? Unhappy. Some folk unhappy, uh, 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 single, unhappy married, unhappy, uh, uh, just unhappy. Praise the Lord. You know, I made my mind. I'm, I'm going to spend my time in joy and happiness. I'm not going to be blaming somebody else for my unhappiness. 
You, 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 you can't blame nobody else for your unhappiness. Praise the Lord. You got to, we're going to talk about it in, in a minute. But you don't point your, somebody else for your unhappiness, uh, you know, uh, uh, for your bad uh, situation. Praise the Lord. Amen. I like what Paul said over there in Acts. He said, I think myself happy. That's, you know, that's the thing I don't want to talk long with long, for unhappy folk. The folk going to have no joy. I don't want to spend too much to a conversation. Because it affects my spirit and, is, and really is an affront to God. God been blessing us and blessing you, blessing us, and we still unhappy, ungrateful. Y'all looking at me funny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, we don't understand what the kingdom is all about. And most of the problems we have uh, emotionally and relationally is because of selfishness. Selfishness. We want, we want this. We want that. We want that. No, no. What are you giving? What are you giving? What, what are you bringing to the table? Y'all see it here. I haven't even gotten to the meat of my lesson. But but understand, you, you, you don't understand what the kingdom and, 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 and some folk been in the church all their life and not showing any kind of evidence of having the Holy Spirit and being a Christian. See, I'm smiling. I'm smiling. Yeah, I know this is going to sting a little bit, but I want to make us aware of time. What are you, what are you going to do financially about the rest of your time? You've been broke all your life. And never asking the question, why are you broke? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, I, I say this to, you know, anybody, anybody broke, because I learned how to not be broke. And that is to give. And then young folks used to sing the song. You know, you, get, uh, you know, they, they got a quote from me. It, it, you know, if you're having situations, especially financial situations, you're having any kind of problem. You see, what you do, you check your what? Giving and you check your living. And if your giving and your living is in order, it's just a test. Ain't no need of blaming nobody else when God has promised you a blessing if you give. Amen. Praise the Lord in the house. And see, what we haven't really understood what the kingdom is all about. Over there in Romans 14, verse 17, uh, it says, and they were talking about, discussing about meat and all this other kind of stuff, you know, eating meat to idols and drinking and so forth. He, he, he said, to, Paul uh, said to them, for the kingdom of God is not what? Meat and drink, but what? But righteousness and peace and joy, and joy in, in the, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. God said that this is what my kingdom is all about. This is what my kingdom is all about. It's about righteousness or being in a right standing with God. It's about having peace. It's about having joy. And, and it's three kinds of peace. I used to say two kinds of peace. But it's three kinds of peace. It is the peace with God that you get when you obey the gospel of Christ. It is the peace of God uh, that's over there in uh, Philippians 4. But it's also the peace with one another. That's having peace in your house. That's having peace with folk in the church. That's having peace on your job. That's having peace with other folk. You know, and, and so what we understand is that if, if you understand about the kingdom, it's, it's about joy, it's about righteousness, and it's about peace. You always have turmoil in your home. You, you don't understand what the, what, what the kingdom is all about. 
It's about peace. Being in harmony with one another. Unity. That's what the kingdom is all about. Amen. Y'all still, y'all, uh, 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 I think that's enough on that one. Peter is saying we are either going to spend the rest of our time to one of two things. Let me get these points on me through. We either going to spend it doing the will of the Gentiles or either we are going to spend it doing the will of God. I mean, that's what it's boiled down to. Either we're going to spend the rest of our time, he says in the text, Doing the will of the Gentiles or the will of God. Now, the will of the Gentiles means the will or the way of, of the unsaved world. And he gives us a great list of sins of the people used to practice before they were saved, before they became Christians. And these sins are called the will of the Gentiles. And he, 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 he lists the sins. He lists them. And he's saying that this is what Gentiles do. This is how the will of the Gentiles look. And this is how you used to look. But he says, listen, it's past time. You don't spend enough time in that. You, you don't spend enough time wasting your life and being involved in these sins. Y'all see it here. And so he began to list them. He says, here it is, lasciviousness, the will of the Gentiles. It refers to every evil conduct. That is unbridled, it is unbridled lust, shameless and outrageous immoral conduct, shameless wickedness. The will of the Gentile is involved lust, and this refers to the appetites of the flesh, evil desires, whatever that, that evil desire is, they're coming from the flesh. Will of the Gentiles. Excess of wine. Reveling. Banqueting. Will of the Gentile. See, uh, the excess of wine speaks of too much drinking. Getting drunk. And it would include drugs. Alcohol, excess. The will of the Gentile. Praise the Lord. Reveling, speaking of wild parties. Going on through the night. If it's night, if it's all night, it's all right. <laughs> Come in late. Don't act like y'all don't know what y'all is. Y'all act like y'all ain't never had it. Being un, uh, unsaved. <laughs> Some of y'all saved still. You know, but praise the Lord. Party, party. You got to party. You got to go to the club. Wheel of Gentile. 
I'm going to try to bandage you up in a few minutes. <laughs> but but you know, I'm talking about the rest of your time. You're going to spend the rest of your time. You know, I used to go back to Memphis and uh, guys, you know, real on when I first uh, moved down, I moved here, I would go back home and, and uh, those guys, you know, I used to hang out with, they were hanging out, still hanging out on the corner. As years passed, and I would go back, still see them hanging out on the cone. Then as years passed, I didn't see as many hanging out on the cone. Then finally, when I go back, I don't see nobody hanging out on the cone. And I asked, I asked, where are they? Where are they? Well, someone, he got killed. This one died. And this one, you know, lost his mind. Wasting time. Wasting time. Party. Yeah, I used to love parties. I don't know how wild it was, but I, I love them parties. Love them parties. They said I was the life of the party. They said, well, we got to have you there. <laughs> yeah, because you know when you get a certain amount of, you know, wine or alcohol in your boy, you, you become lively anyway. I've seen guys that wouldn't talk, you know, wouldn't even just as timid and shy and get a little alcohol in them, boy, they talking to everybody. <laughs> yeah. So he, he's saying that in this reveling speaks of wild parties, then banqueting speaks of uh, gross, weak behavior that comes from drinking, sexual sins. You got, to, you got to get drunk. You got to get high. You got to, you know, you think that you got to, you know, in order to have a good time. Then it says abominable idolatries means things uh, that are prohibited by law. It means the worship of idols, the worship of idol gods. What Peter is saying, don't spend the rest of your time following the will of the Gentiles because we time is valuable and we shouldn't waste our time. We're just here for a short time. And when you compare that uh, to eternity, that's not very much time. Three scores and ten by reason of strength, four scores. It's not a much, much time. Our goal, I'm almost ready to close. Our goal in life as children of God, as the church, is to come is to cease from sin. We, we, we won't reach the goal in this life. We will change. We know that we will be given new bodies, but the goal is uh, to cease from sin. No person is above sin. We all sin, but we ought to mature to a point where we sin less and less and less and John says if we walk in the light as he is in light and have fellowship one with the other that the blood of Jesus Christ continually cleanses us from all sin. So in your life, in my life, we ought to reach a point of maturity where certain things don't bother us anymore. We ought to reach a certain state of maturity where we don't allow situations and circumstances and people to disturb our peace. Y'all still here? So the goal, yes, I am saved, but I am being saved. And that's sanctification. God is working on me. He is working in me to bring about the nature of Jesus Christ, that we become like him. And those circumstances that we go through, God is orchestrating them for our good. That was Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 is saying. 
Paul says, and we know, praise the Lord. We know what? That God worked all things together for good. But them that love God, it's not everybody now, but them that love God and who are called according to his purpose. What is his purpose? You read the next verse, you'll see that we conform to the image of Jesus Christ. It's nothing like a problem. And some folks never learn from the problem. They, they never learn from their problem. They still got the same problem year after year, year after year, year after year. The same problem. You, God, see, see the, most of the problems we are, uh, is, is caused by us. But God can work it out and bring some good out of it. Y'all see it here? Yeah, I'm going to come on down there in a minute. Yeah. Well, I got three, about four more. Ooh, look at these pages. Okay. But uh, let me come on down so some of y'all can relax and get ready. To, yeah, get ready to close and get ready to stand. See, God, is all right, son. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. Hey, I'm going to give them to you. I may not be able to go through all of them. But what I want to do now, and what he's saying, don't, 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 don't follow with the rest of your time. Don't, 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 don't spin it. Don't waste it. In the wheel of the Gentiles. So some of y'all need to just come on out the club. What put you? What 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 you mean? Some of us, are, he's writing to folk. These Christian folk, he was writing to back in Rome, back in the fall time. You know, ain't nothing changed. They had, uh, they, you know, now we call them club, but you know, all the day we call them juke joints and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we had names for them. I don't know what they call them back then. <laughs> But, but some of us need you to come on out. Yeah, stop following the will of the Gentile. And do what? Follow the will of God. Follow the will of God. You waste enough time out there. You know, and, 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 and then just think about what you got to show for it. I'm talking about older folk now. Well, young folk too, because y'all. Y'all boat, you know, <laughs> I remember I was young, I'll, you know, get paid Friday and boat or Monday. <laughs> Spending on cigarettes and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and so, you don't spend enough time out there. What you got to show for? Look at them guys, you know, been on, uh, 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 on the corner all their life. Don't have nothing to show for. Don't even have no retirement, and, and, and can't get all social security because it never worked. You, you, you got you got to work to get some hope social security. You you got to put in some time. Just cause you sixty five don't mean you're gonna get a check. If you ain't work nowhere, praise the Lord. <laughs> And you need to be consistent on the job. What you know? Got these folks that retired, been on the job 30, 40 years. Yeah, yeah. They get a check. <laughs> waste the time. They had to waste the time. And uh, I tell y'all a story about this. Uh, this guy was in this race, and uh, and they young guys, you know, was, you know, they was there. this guy. They saw him. Said, "Man, you want to race? You want to race? You know." And uh, they said, yeah, you know, a guy 20, 20, they said, want to race? You know, the guy thought around me, like, yeah, yeah, I'll race, I'll race. And boy, they started running, running. And uh, the guy, the guy, they chimed away. <laughs> <laughs> and he just gave out. But he finally, he walked on across the line where they finished. And, he said, <laughs> and the young guy said, man, you, you are. Man, you shoot. You did good. You did good. He said, How old are you? 
about it too. <laughs> See that life had ran him down. Yeah. He looked like he was 60 or 70. <laughs> because out there is a hard life out there. It's going to take its toll on your body. You may be take you all this, but just keep on stay out there. <laughs> stay on out there. Praise the Lord in the house. Yeah. So what is the will of God? Let me go over this right quick. Generally speaking, the will of God is the word of God. But specifically... I want to point out three things that pertain to the will of God. I may not finish, but I want to point them out. One is uh, found in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. The other is found in uh, Matthew 6, verse 31 to 33. And the third one is found in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 18. What is the will of God? Well, well, Romans says in Romans chapter 12, verse number one, watch what? He said, well, Paul says, I beseech you, brethren, how? Therefore, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be what? transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may what? Prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Put the amplified version up there right quick. Uh, put the amplified version right there. I, I want you to see something. This is uh, the will of God. Uh, God wants us to prove his will by life. He, 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 watch this. He said, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decision, a, rather a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a what? Living sacrifice, holy, devoted, concentrated, and well pleasing to God, which is what? Your reasonable rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. is a spiritual worship. And then he says what? And be not what? Conform to this world or age fashioned after adapting to its external superficial uh, custom. But what? Be Transform, change by the entire renewal of your mind by its new ideals and new attitude so that you may prove for yourselves what is a good, acceptable, perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in the sight of you. He said, you know, We'll present our body so we can prove first to ourselves. We, we need to prove to ourselves the, what, what the good and acceptable, perfect will of God. We need to prove ourse ourselves that, that God's will is God's word, and if we're going to get changed, it's through obedience to his word. Prove to his say. We first got to prove it to ourselves before we can prove to somebody else what has been in Christ done for you. What does Jesus mean to you? Is there any evidence in your life that will show that you are a child of God and you've been changed? Is there any evidence? But how have we conformed to this world? Are we conform to the world's mold instead of being transformed? Amen. Instead of being transformed. See, I, I, 
I, I, I proved to myself God's word is right. And God's word will work for anybody who will apply it. It'll work for anybody. Amen. It'll work for anybody. Because, you know, I, I used to have a problem with y'all. Y'all just a preacher? Yeah, some of y'all, man. I, 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 I used to have a problem. Praise the Lord. And, but, but then I found out the Lord revealed to me, there's the ideal, but there's the real. And I found out the real, that all y'all got some problems. All of us has got some problems. Praise the Lord. And the Lord sent me to help us all out with our problems. <laughs> Preaching the word of God. Amen. Y'all see it here? Yeah, so, so, and so because I had, to, I, had to, I had to deal with that. And I matured. Because, you see, you know, if I had a problem with you, I'd just forget you. <laughs> you ain't nothing to do with you. Yeah. Yeah, he know you. But it got so I was ignoring, got to the person, most of the church I was ignoring. <laughs> That's bad for a preacher. <laughs> But if I had my way, like uh, Shabar said, if I had, my, I'm glad God has his way, because if I had my way, I would say, you gone, you gone, take your folk with you. Yeah. And all them bad children you got. <laughs> so I had to learn. My love had to grow. I had to learn how, and see, my old self-love is uh, uh, abandonment. And so, with the old self love and abandonment, you know, we don't want to be around folk that, you know, cause us issues. And what we'll do, that we'll, we'll those who have old self love and we'll disengage. We're in a denial. I just, you know, and that's bad, you know. So, my uh, new self love uh, is to stay engaged. Because, see, when you're married, <laughs> and you got old self-love band, you, you just can't disengage. <laughs> and the person in the house with you, you dis how you going to disengage? I guess I ain't having nothing else to do with you. Except when, well, anyway, can't disengage. So I had to learn how to engage, even when things are not going as well. I had to learn how to stay engaged. Let us communicate. Let us talk. Let us set it down and work it out. That's maturity. Don't stay a child all your life. Learn how to deal with problems as a mature person in Christ. Amen. And so that's, what, that's, that's the will of God. That's the will of God. What's the other one I gave? I'm about to quit. I gave you all of them so you all know where I'm going. First Thessalonians. That, that, was a, that wasn't a second one. Matthew. Okay, look at Matthew chapter 6, 32. Watch this. We're talking about the will of God now. Watch Matthew 6. Yeah, the, the, mic is, the mic is out. Okay. I think the shoe might have gone through. Uh, watch this. I want you to see what's the will of God for us. And we're talking about how to spend the rest of your time. The rest reverse, of your time reverse. should be, be uh, presenting your body as a living sacrifice. The fact that God's words are not conforming to the world. Amen. And he, and he even mentioned over there, I said, now what you got to do, because the folk going to talk about you. He said, them folk that used to run with, they going to talk about you. Because they, they going to see some change in you. And, and let me share this with y'all. Uh, uh, if, if there ain't no change in you, and you still acting the way you've always acted, doing the thing, don't try to invite nobody to the church. 
and hope they don't see you up in here when they, get, you know, just happen to drop in. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, Lord, I ain't know. <laughs> he was just there with me last night at the Club Rosewood. They don't have no Club Rosewood here. What's the club here? Ain't nobody going to say that. <laughs> 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 but brother said, no. I'm not. <laughs> So I'll see you from out of town. So you don't know what's happening up in Jackson. You don't know what's happening up in Jackson. Oh, you know. Oh. <laughs> but the point I'm making here is that the folk we used to run would need to see a change in us. They need to see a change. So they said, man, what's going on with you? You don't hang with us no more. What do you think? Huh? You think you're better than us? Uh huh. Yeah, they're gonna talk about you. Well, that's why you have to change who you running with. You can't run with the same folk. Hardest thing I ever had to, ever had to do is to cut my friends loose. The ones I used to run with, I had a good time with. Boy, we was. That was the hardest thing I ever. I almost cried. I'm just going to tell you the truth. Lord, Lord. And a brother came from out of town and moved to Chicago. Came to town, man. Found where I was and came to the house. And had a fifth already in his hand. <laughs> Said, man, Pitt, man, I've been looking for you, man. Where you been? <laughs> He said, man, let's go, let's go, let's go party. What's happening? What, you know, what's going on? I said, man, no. I don't, I don't do that no more. I had to get it out. I said, I don't do that no more. What, 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 what do you mean? He said, uh, I tell you, man, I'm a, I'm a Christian now. So I said, well, I'm a deacon. So we, we let's get it on. We still get it. I didn't mean to talk about myself. I just kind of, but anyway, see, you got to change who you run with. You can't run with the same folk and expect to uh, overcome, uh, you know, these addictions and all that. You can't be running with them. You got to. You got to break away from them. But then let me close with this one. Oh, then. Therefore. Uh, therefore. No, no, no. Go back to Matthew because I want y'all to see this. Uh, because in verse 32, what does it say? For after all these things. After all these things. Do the Gentiles seek. Do the Gentiles seek. Seek. See, we talk about the will of the Gentiles. See, the things of the, the material things. What you going to eat? What you going to put on? All that? See, that's what the Gentiles see. That's their main focus, materialism. Materialistic. What you going to wear? What you going to, where you going to sleep? What you going to eat? That's what the Gentiles are seeking. But then he says, uh, as opposed to, uh, uh, contrast to what the Gentiles see, he said, you do what? Seek first the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, and His righteousness, and His righteousness, and all these things, and all these things shall be added unto you. Shall be added unto you. Said so you give kingdom priority. What you gonna do with the rest of your time? You gonna give kingdom priority. You gonna give kingdom focus. You gonna deal, put God's will first in your life, and everything else is second. And He says, all these things shall be added unto you. Then in Thessalonians, as I close, he says, and I wish I had time to read all of that, but we won't have time to read all of it. I, I just want you to look at the verse, what, 17, where it's saying everything. But if you, if, you, if you come all the way down from, first, first, I think, verse 14, it talks about, uh, you know, what you're supposed to do, warn folks, seek uh, the exhort folk. See, see, he says, exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble man, support the weak, be patient with all men. He's talking to all of us. 
He's not just talking to the preacher. All of us should be warning folk. All of us should be doing these things. Going back, all of us should be having patience. All of us should be, you know, uh, when you, you got folk in your family, are we warning them? We got family members in the church say, you keep going down that road, you're going to end up in disaster. We need, all of us need to be a warning unruly folk and, and comfort the feeble-minded folk and support the weak folk and be patient toward all men. And, and then verse 15, see that you render evil, uh, evil for evil, that you don't render evil for evil, but follow after good, but among yourselves and to all men. Read, read, watch what it says. And then it says, rejoice evermore. Read, go ahead. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. And everything. And everything. All of us. Give thanks. Give thanks. And everything. He said, give thanks. For this is. For this is. The will of God. The will of God. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Stand on your feet. You. you see, the will of God in this passage is in everything. Give thanks. In everything. He didn't say for everything. But in everything, give thanks. And you're in a situation, give thanks. Your relationship situation is not where you want to be, give thanks. He said give thanks for an uh, uh, emotional situation. For that. He said give thanks. And, and I believe he, says, he said give thanks because it could be worse. You're not really looking at what you have because you're so focused on what you don't have. Amen. That's why he said, in everything, give thanks. So what you're dealing with? Give thanks. Thank to God. Because, see, I, I don't care what it, what, what it is, whatever you're dealing with, going through, you know, only thing... I would want to ask for, just give me a little more time. Give me a little more time. Give me some energy, health and strength. Praise the Lord. You don't have to give me nothing. I ain't begging. But just give me a little time. Lord, just give me a little more time. Let me sow some more seeds. Let me, let me do a little bit more, work a little bit harder. And I know it will be a turnaround. That's why I can thank him. Thank him for my energy, for my strength. Lord, I thank you for waking me up this morning, closing me in my right mind. Thank you even for the problems I have because I know you're working it out and those problems are for my good. I may be in the furnace of fire, of affliction, but I know it being in the furnace, I, I'm going to come out Better than I was. Folk all the time tell me I'm going through something. Well, go on through it. David said, I, uh, when I uh, walk through the valley, through the valley of shadow of death, I feel no evil. See, some of us camping out instead of going on through. Amen. I'm going, yeah, I'm going through it, but but look, listen, I'm going through it. Give me a little bit more time. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be through it. I'll be through it. I I, I you know I, I was one time several times in a rain in a rainstorm. And uh and uh, a lot of the cars would pull over to the side and they just gonna wait it out. And uh, but I said, No, I'm not gonna pull over. I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna drive through. I'm going to go through it. And, and it seemed like it was just raining harder and harder. But I kept on driving because I'm going through. I'm going through. And soon after the rain, you begin to subside, you know. And then I began to see uh, uh, clouds. But I, then, I, then I began to see the rain. And then I said, thank God. I kept on driving. And I drove through. And some of us need to drive on through your problem. You drive on through your problems. Yeah, you got some problems. Just don't have a camp. Every time I hear you, every time I see you, you know I'm going through. I'm, I'm going through. You've been going through for years. 
you know, I, I'd get me another vehicle if it take me that long to go through. <laughs> it take me all that time to go through. Praise the Lord. So the lesson this morning, how are you going to spend the rest of your time, the rest of your life? Are you going to spend it to the will of Gentile? Are you going to spend it to the will of God? And if you spend it to the will of God, God blesses faithfulness. He blesses obedience. And you can trust God to make it right. To carry you through. And I know all of us have been through some storms. And you honest, you, you have to say, God brought me through. I went through. I didn't just give up. I went through. Because I know God is working on me to make me better. To make me better. See, he won't allow it. He, when we cause it, you know, he used it to make us better. But we looking at somebody else making them better. Well, he ain't that. He ain't that. He, well, Something God is trying to do with you. He either trying to put some in you or get some out of you. He's trying to put some in you or get some out of you. Amen. So you, you so we need to pray to God, God, what are you trying to get out of my life? What are you trying to do with me? What are you trying to do for me? It seems as though I'm having problems after problems. I want to learn from the situation. You see, some of us will never learn from our mistakes. We keep on making the same mistake because we hadn't learned. You hadn't learned. It's something for you to learn, not the other person. It's not the other person. It's you. It's me. The only person I can change is me. I can't change nobody else. It's me. So you here today, um, it's an invitation for you to come and give your life to Christ. Some of us, you know, you, you may have made a mess, but Jesus, he knows how to straighten out a mess. That's why you got to give your life to Christ, commit to him. You see, and those who are in the church and you still having problems, you just need to commit your life to Christ. The Lord, look, help me to see me. Work with me so I can work with someone else. And that's, that's what we need to do. Be humble. Be humble. And admit, you, you just messed up. You just don't have good sense. <laughs> that's hard for folks to admit to. <laughs> Just don't have good sense. And, uh, and, uh, and for a man, you, you know, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, women are smart. The, the blind can't lead the blind. But women are smart. And they can see. They can see where you're leading them. And they see a ditch up there, you think they're going to keep on following you? And some may be wrong with your eyesight. They're going to say, baby, don't you see that ditch? And you still heading toward it? I love you. <laughs> I love you. Can I say this? Let me give, I'm going to give our black women some, some good. Yeah, let me pray, huh? <laughs> see that? Y'all you know, at them games, y'all ain't even worried about them sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't called no name. And a lot of places we go to a standing room only. We just a room stand. That's all we go right there, I don't see. And see, I don't know why y'all complaining about standing. I'm the only one that's standing the whole time. <laughs> Y'all been sitting down. 
<laughs> and I've had hip surgery. And I'm over 70 years old. And some of y'all, y'all. <laughs> well, yeah, I, and then my fault coach you had no high heels. Amen. I'm closed. <laughs> so you're here today. You want to give your life to Christ. It's come through hearing the good news of the gospel. That Christ died for our sins, was buried, rose again the third day. According to the scripture, believe that with all your heart, be willing to repent of your sins, confess Christ to be the Son of God, and then be baptized in water for the remission of your sins. And the Lord will add you to his church. You don't try to go find one to join. When you're baptized, you're baptized into the body of Christ, the church of Christ. Amen. As a child of God, you want to stay in the will of God. You want to stay in the will of God. You want to stay in the will of God. And I just thank God, you know, for, you know, giving me this energy. Praise the Lord. I can, I can preach a couple more hours. But I know y'all can't handle it. Y'all can't handle it. Y'all just can handle a, 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 a good a soap opera or, or a movie for two or three hours long. You, <laughs> But you're here. We want to encourage you to come. You're having some situation problems in life. We'll pray with you. And, and also, not only will we pray with you, and what we want to do, we want to get with you to help you. We're going to get with you to help you. That's what uh, leadership is all about. Yeah, that's what leadership is all about. Song of invitation. I've got peace of mind, uh, and I've got joy that I never, never could find. Uh, I've got a love, love that lasts, and it cannot be surpassed. I know that the brightest star that shines, and I've got a heaven on my mind. Well, I've got Jesus, got Jesus, and I know, and I know He's mine. Yeah, Lord, I got peace of mind, and I've got joy that I never could find. Well, I've got a love, love of that lamb, and it cannot be served. Well, I know that the bright star that shine, and I've got heaven on my mind. Well, I got Jesus, and I know, I know he's a man on my mind. Yes, oh Lord, I got peace, peace of mind. Anybody got joy that I never could find? I've got a love, oh love, that lasts, and it cannot be surpassed. I know that the brightest star that shines, and I've got a heaven on my mind. Well, I've got Jesus, and I know I know He's mine, oh mine. Mind. I, I've got joy that I never could find. Oh, Lord, I got love, oh, love that lasts, up. and it cannot be surpassed. I know that the brought well, and I've got a heaven on my mind. Well, I've got Jesus. And I know, and I know he's mine, oh, mine. Amen. Let's church say amen. Let's give Brother Pittman a love deposit. Time. Thank you for that message on this morning. Uh, Sister Uckham just come uh, ask some prayers for uh, traveling grace. She said she'll be traveling over to Atlanta uh, on this week uh, for the Church of Christ, uh, the women's lectureship. Women's Lectureship for Church of Christ will be held in Atlanta 
Uh, she's leaving out on Wednesday, so just praying for traveling grace for that. And she also wants to um, give away to her uh, to give a praise report as well. I just want to give praise to God. Two storms that uh, one I've come out of and one I hope to come out of. I was at the state capitol on March the 21st and had a severe fall. And I'm in the process, of course, of going to therapy a couple of times a week. So I'm just thanking God, and I know the outcome is going to be uh, in my favor. And I'm also, um, after the fall, I went to three different doctors, but in the process, I also went to my gynecologist, and as a result of my mammogram, there was some disturbance on one side, and had to go in for another uh, test, and then this past Tuesday, I went in for a procedure. And I'm just praising God and giving him all the glory and all the honor, because it was benign, no cancer. Uh, they are uh, asking. I'm thanking God for that. Uh, I will prob I will probably have to go in for a procedure. I call it the disturbed area, but they'll just actually remove this disturbed area. So I just want God to know how grateful I am. I didn't earn it. I don't deserve it. I I'm not worthy, but he saw favor in me, so I'm just thanking God so much. <laughs> And I want to mention also that uh, I didn't mention last week, but uh, uh, Carolyn, she had a workshop in the Mississippi State Lectureship as well. I didn't get a chance to see it, but I know she did a great job. And I didn't want her to think that I just mentioned the men and not miss. <laughs> Amen. Appreciate the job she did at Mississippi State Lectureship. All right. I have, um, no, just give her a love deposit there. Thank you, Sister Hopkins. And we'll certainly be keeping you, uh, keeping you in prayer. Uh, Rodney has come, and he's uh, he's praying for uh, uh, his mental health. He says just uh, just praying to God that he continue to improve, and also his for a financial breakthrough. And also he's praying for the city of Jackson. So certainly we'll keep you in prayer, uh, Rodney. Let's give him a love deposit, if you will. Also um, received a note here from Brother George Berry, and uh, he's going to be having uh, surgery at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, I believe, and he says that I am praying for uh, a procedure that he's having, an outpatient operation uh, tomorrow morning. So we'll definitely be praying for you, Brother Perry, Brother Barry, uh, George Barry. So let, let's keep him in prayer and let's give him a love deposit as well. Amen. Also, um, we have Sister Bird. I have a, neighbor, uh, a note here from her, and it reads, she said, my nephew, uh, Henry Shaw III, has been diagnosed with uh, stage four lung cancer, and he is only 30 years old. Please pray for a full recovery and also pray for our family during this very difficult time. And that's from Sister Burt. So we'll certainly be praying on behalf of that family as well. So if you will, let's go to God in prayer if there's not any other. Brother Pittman. Uh, we're asking prayers for those who will be leaving uh, on Thursday, going to the senior seminar. We have about eight people that would be going, and uh, we ask for prayers, safe travel there, and and uh, safe travel back. We know we're gonna have a great time. Uh, before I forget, too, I want to remember the Collier family as well. Let's keep that family in prayer, uh, also. Certainly will. We'll definitely be doing that. Also, too, I received a phone call from Sister uh, Lisa Kane. Uh, her brother, you know, has been funeralized, not funeralized, I'm sorry, ICU. And I uh, had a chance to visit with her. And part of her family, uh, I believe it was Friday. And uh, so they're having to make a decision on behalf of her brother, uh, who's in, again, who's in ICU. And it's a very difficult decision. And she's asking prayers that the whole family will be in agreement with that decision that they're going to have to make this week concerning him. So let's keep the Cain family uh, in prayer as well. So let's go to God in prayer, if you will. Dear Father, again, we just thank you for being our God, being our Father, being our provider, and being our comforter. We know that we can always come to you with any situation that we face in life. We know, Father, that you're always there, providing us with 
the reassurance through your word that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. We pray, Father, for all who have responded in their own way uh, this morning, uh, that you will grant their request, Father, and that you will receive all the praise and glory. Sometimes in life there are difficult decisions that we must make, but we know, Father, that everything is in your hands and you control every aspect of our lives. And help us to always trust you and, Father, and be at peace with whatever your will is. Thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus, who came and died for all of us, who made the greatest sacrifice, who showed the fullest extent of his love, by shedding his blood on the cross. Thank you for this opportunity that you give us to come together in fellowship and worship in your name, Father, and help us to never, ever take for granted the relationship that we have with you and that we also have with each other. Thank you, Father, for just giving us that sense of peace that surpasses all understanding that the world don't understand, even through our difficult times, we know you are working something out in our lives. And we might not understand it then, but we know if we continue to trust you that you'll show us why. Thank you, Father, for all that you do. Thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for your grace and mercy. We love you for all that you do, Father. For it's in your son's name we pray. Let us all say amen. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Let's give our spiritual leader another love deposit for an outstanding message on this morning. All right. I want to take just a quick second to recognize uh, some folks in our audience that decided to uh, worship with us this morning. We want you to know that you're our honored guests, and we're certainly plum glad that you took time to be with us in our services on this morning. So as I call your names, if you will, please stand so that we can give you a warm hanging moss Love deposit. First, we have Freddie, I believe, Downs from, is this El Cajon, California? Guest of Kayla Evans. Did I get that right? What? Is that, what did I say I did? Okay, let's give him a love deposit. Long way from home. Good to see you. All right. All right, next we have, this is Natalie Warren. Uh, is this Fairbanks, Georgia? Okay. Uh, Fairburn, Georgia. Good to have you. Give a love deposit. Good to see you this morning. We're certainly glad you're with us in our services. Next, we have Express Car of Jackson. Express Car of Jackson. Empress, pray for me. Will you forgive me, Empress? Will you forgive me? Y'all give her a love deposit. I believe my eyesight is, 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 is doing something. Pray for me. Glad to have you, Empress. Give her another love deposit. Glad you're with us in our services on this morning. That's all of the cards that I have. If you brought a guest and you would like to introduce your guest, you may do so at this time. If you came on your own, stand and give us your names and tell us where you are from. I'm going to start on my right this time. My right and your left. Any on this side that we need to recognize. All right. My left. Yes, sir. Okay, all right, good. All right, I want to make sure all of our guests get one of those packets for sure. Any on this side? Any on this side? All right, let's give all of them another good, strong love deposit. Come back and see. I'll get your name right next time. All right. All right, one announcement before Brother Madison comes and gives us the benediction. Again, Ladies Ministry will host a wellness workshop on today. Dr. Timothy Quinn will be conducting the workshop, and it'll be at 5 p.m. via Zoom. And all are invited, and I understand there'll be a Q&A session, uh, so please tune in. All right, that's a pretty name, too, by the way. Empress, I like that. All right. Are we all right? Have we had a great worship service this morning? Yeah, stand to your feet. We're going to give Brother Madison the mic so he can give us the benediction. Let us look to the Lord and receive the benediction. Grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, 
Rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we meet again. In Jesus' name we ask all of it. Amen, amen, and amen. amen.